Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome around the globe to Congan Water Radio, featuring Congan Water Health and Information International Call, where we consider, clarify, and often correct the conventional wisdom around Congan Water technology, the different machines, science behind water types, uses, and benefits, the testing process, the maintenance and cleaning of the machines, and much, much more. We also explore a plethora of other topics as we teach, promote, and discuss the three-pronged approach to health and wellness, hydration, detoxification, and complete macro and micro nutrition. I'm family physician, now retired, Dr. Lisa Battle Singletary, your virtual keto coach, and I'll be joined by my co-host and fearless leader, Mr. Terrence Hope, an Agic 6A distributor extraordinaire, and together we bring you the best of both worlds. Wow, it's Saturday, uh, September 18th. And it is call number four, two, six. I just am astounded every time we uh, add another call and I see all the numbers, four, two, six. Amazing. And um, almost 50 of those calls are now on video. All the previous calls are still on our freeconferencecall.com database, but um, we just uh, are so thankful for you all being with us and that we have this platform that we can share all this information with the world. So today is, I guess you could say it's part two. I was, I was really inspired by talking about the heart on our last call when we talked about heart health. And um, I was also thinking about one of my absolute favorite, all-time favorite calls that we did uh, on freeconferencecall.com. We talked about music and health, but we didn't zone in on the heart on that call. And so I was thinking we could really extend a little bit of our heart learning and focus on the effect of music and the heart. So um, we're gonna share that with you today. And then uh, I'm assuming I'm going first. Uh, then our fearless leader and hope and uh, host will join us, Mr. Terrence Hope. All right, so oh, look, I see I'm getting some chat messages, okay. All right, cool. All right, so uh, music and heart health. So that's just what I Googled uh, to, to find some articles and there are a lot of them, let me tell you. Uh, but we're also gonna look at some of the, um, we're gonna look at one PubMed review in particular that reviewed multiple studies on the topic. So let's dive in, shall we? All right, so we're gonna start off with something from the uh, Heart Association. So um, they published this article just in March called Calming Us Down or Revving Us Up music can be good for the heart. And as you know, or I hope you know, but I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna put all of these resources in the call description box when we transfer the recording to YouTube. So you'll be, you'll be able to find it on our YouTube channel, channel Congan Water Radio. All of the calls, um, all the video calls are there. Okay. So calming us down or revving us up, music can be good for the heart. 
stuck in traffic with a nasty storm making a stressful commute even worse, I feel you. Joanne Lowry, or Lowy, reached for the car radio. I felt my heartbeat rise, she said. And she's a director of the Louis Armstrong Center for Music and Medicine at Mount Sinai Beth Israel in New York City. So I switched to the Bach. Hey, I listened to Bach this morning. All right. And uh, I listened to the Bach cello suite in my traffic burden playlist. Oh, that's good. So you can make a, you can make a playlist for your stressful situations. That's a good suggestion. I just said, I'm not going to worry. I'm just going to breathe and release it all. Remember, this was an old strategy that we, not old, but one of the earlier strategies that we brought you. Every hour, on the hour, take three deep breaths while you're awake. You know, you breathe, uh, hopefully you're breathing well while you sleep. But when we're awake, we tend to breathe shallow breaths. So take three deep cleansing breaths every hour on the hour. Okay, back to the article. At the other end of the metronome, okay, I love that. If you don't know what a metronome is, it's the thing that keeps time. It's a pendulum, a weighted pendulum. And uh, we used to have one sitting right on the piano. And depending on where you put the weight, it, the time uh, will tick um, either faster or slower. So it keeps your uh, rhythm when you're playing music. So this was a uh, lovely use of the term. At the other end of the metronome, Dr. David Alter, who studies the use of music in promoting cardiac health, uses the Rolling Stones to help him power through a workout. It's almost like medicine, he says. He's a cardiologist at the University Health Network in Toronto and a senior scientist at whatever this research institute is. Our research recently published in the Journal of Psychology of Sport and Exercise, and there's a link to the article there, has shown that music can distract us from pain, from the pain of exercise. That's why we may be able to exercise longer or more intensively with music. That point actually is brought out in the PubMed review as well. Such is the therapeutic power of music. Even in ancient times, Greek physicians used flutes and stringed instruments for healing. Today, researchers are still sorting out the health benefits. There's an overall perception that music does us good, Alter said, but we need to prove it scientifically. I do think we're getting more rigorous in our scientific approach. Recent studies underscore the point. A 2020 study published in the Journal of Cardiothoracic Surgery showed music therapy eased pain, anxiety, and depression among people recovering from coronary bypass surgery. Similarly, people with episodes of chest pain soon after a heart attack who listened to music for 30 minutes a day over seven years reported less anxiety and chest pain and had a lower rate of cardiac death than those who did not. So music can save your life. Now, this, these findings are done in coronary patients, right? So we also are gonna need studies in normal or healthy patients to see if it has a preventative or um, some kind of mitigating uh, response. A 2018 study in scientific reports even suggests that music therapy could make high blood pressure medicine more effective. In general, I'll just said there are two schools of thought about why music is effective. One says the music itself can stimulate all the healthy hormones and body functions to lower blood pressure and improve heart rate. 
But the other school of thought says it's really behaviors we're doing that are helping our heart. And music is just helping us to improve those behaviors, particularly the behavior of exercise. We know that exercise is a game changer in terms of survival, longevity, and quality of life. He said, I don't think these are governed directly by the music, but music can help us with those healthy lifestyle choices and behaviors, and they help improve our heart function. Uh, and they have to emphasize. So he says, music can help us with the health, life, healthy lifestyle choices and behaviors, and those healthy lifestyle choices and behaviors are what improve our heart function. The rhythms of music, Lois said, can influence breathing, which also affects heart function. Besides the benefits of lowering stress, he said, or she said, breathing and heart rates go hand in hand. We know if we can slow the pulmonary function and have stronger inhalations where more oxygen is absorbed in the blood, we'll have better cardiac outcomes. The clear conclusion, Lori said, is music should be part of everyone's health plan. Her center serves people of all ages and many conditions from developmentally delayed children to young people with emotional issues and adults with chronic illnesses. Every person may benefit from a different kind of music based on their culture, their past history, their genes, and their resilience. And I would say also the situation that they're in. A music therapist can help figure out what is healthiest for you. Even without consulting a professional, healthy people can put music to work for them. And healthy people can put music to work for them every day and night. Find the right accompaniment to charge up a workout. Then play a more soothing tune to ease into a good night's sleep. I like Eminem, but it activates me. So I know I shouldn't be listening to that before I go to sleep, she said who suggests turning off TVs and devices an hour before bedtime. Find some music that relaxes you. Okay, so that was a great article. Um, I think and a lot of tips that we can uh, take from that. So let's just take a peek at this review on pubmed.gov. That's pubmed.gov, the repository online for the National Library of Medicine. Uh, a systematic review, this was in March of 2021. A systematic review of effects of recorded music, listening during exercise on physical activity adherence and health outcomes in patients with coronary heart disease. So again, um, we're dealing with patients with heart uh, issues. We're not dealing with quote unquote healthy people, but uh, what lessons are they getting? Their conclusions, the review provides relatively limited evidence for the potential benefits of recorded music listening during exercise in individuals with coronary heart disease. The findings, should be carefully interpreted and generalized. Further rigorous design research addressing the limitations uh, is needed. I welcome more research on music and heart health. But uh, what were some of the results uh, of the study? They found, uh, they used seven studies, um, all but one, well, the overall quality they had some studies that were weak, some studies that were moderate strength, and two studies that were strong in their study design. Several studies reviewed uh, showed significant effects of music on attendance at exercise-based cardiac rehabilitation, right? So if you don't like the music, you probably won't be as likely to maintain it to come on uh, effects on maintenance of physical activity after intervention, 
on perceived exertion. So the music makes it sound, makes you feel like you didn't work quite as hard on male waist circumference, on mood, and on cognitive function. So a lot of different ways they're showing or they're beginning to show that music um, helps heart health. So uh, I did wanna talk about what happens when the heart beats. There was a question uh, uh, about heart arrhythmias last on the last call. And um, I wanted to show you a couple things about the heart beat. So the heart is a musk, a muscle, right? It's, um, and the muscle becomes a pump when it contracts exactly right. Now, most of your muscles are anchored between uh, one bone and another bone and over a joint. So when that muscle contracts, it can move uh, the lower bone and cause that bone to move. And that's how we can open a door or push an elevator button or eat or get dressed. The, all those muscles are working because they, they are attached to bones and they cross a joint. The heart muscle is not attached to any bones. And so it doesn't cross any joints. So it has to, um, it has to beat in exactly precise, um, in, a in a precise order, um, they call it a functional syncytium. The, the muscles functional, meaning it has to work. And syncytia means certain muscles have to work together in order for that squeeze to actually push blood where it's got to go. So we know um, a couple things that the heart is a pump, is a, is a dual pump. One side of the heart pumps blood that comes in from the body that's deoxygenated out to the lungs to get oxygen. The other side of the heart pumps blood that comes, oxygenated blood that comes back from the lungs, pumps it out to the body. And those two sides of the heart have to function exactly in sync. And um, I'm gonna show you just a little bit of how that happens. Uh, it's definitely regulated by the electrical system that travels through the heart. And I, I mean, it, I'm not gonna be able to show you everything, uh, but uh, it is just, I wanna give you an idea of how elegant what we call the cardiac cycle is. So this is just a picture of the two pumps. This is the right heart and this is the left heart. And the right heart, right at the top, here's where your pacemaker is. And depending on how this node fires will determine when all of these muscles contract and how that signal goes down from the atria down into the ventricles to cause these muscles to contract. So um, just a quick picture I have. Uh, I just grabbed this one uh, picture. And again, uh, oop, there we go. Um, I, this just as one slide could be an entire course in, you know, medical school or in, in uh, graduate school. So I just want you to get an idea of what's happening with the slide. So here, um, the, the large pumps here, let's start with number three. The large pumps uh, are your ventricles. They pump the blood out of the heart either to the lungs 
or to the body. The top two chambers, so there are four chambers of the heart, are the atria. And the atria receive blood from the body or from the heart, and the atria will uh, help to fill the ventricles. So that um, they're important in getting all the blood uh, that's necessary into the ventricles so the ventricles can pump them out. Now in this picture, the heart is entirely relaxed. All the valves are closed and it's like this little teeny period of rest for the heart. And the more, um, the, uh, the, the more it rests, the pressure starts to decrease. So imagine if you have hypertension and your heart can't rest, right? Then that's causing more and more and more pressure. But it's very important, this resting period, because that's when the ventricles can fill with blood. If the ventricles are too tense, then they can't fill with enough blood. They have to rest and relax in order to be able to fill with blood. And then uh, when, when they have almost filled, the atria contract to give them the last little push of, of blood that's needed. And then look at number one, the ventricles then contract and they squeeze that blood at the same time out to the lungs to get more oxygen and out to the body to deliver the oxygenated blood. It is just amazing. So um, this is just a little glimpse of something that we call the cardiac cycle. Uh, I hope I was sharing my screen when I did that. Oh, looks like you could, I, I didn't. So here we go, I'm sorry. Yeah, here's the slide. All right, so we started here with the heart relaxed, valves closed and continue relaxing. The, the blood comes in to the right atrium, goes into the right ventricle, comes into the left atrium, goes into the left ventricle. So your ventricles are, that's the first part of your ventricles filling. And then when your ventricles are almost full, the atria squeeze. So these two top chambers squeeze in. So that contraction, they have to squeeze together to push that last bit of blood into the ventricles. And then this, the, uh, the valves close so the blood can't back up into the atria and the blood will go flow out of the heart through um, the aorta, the uh, oxygenated blood flows from the left ventricle out to the rest of the body and the pulmonary trunk, uh, the deoxygenated blood flows out to the lungs. So it has to be regulated so that these muscles contract all at the same time. And actually that's not true, it contracts. It starts contracting from the bottom and squeezes up, which that makes sense, right? I ne but I never thought of that until I, I was actually taught that. I thought in my mind, you know, all the squeezing happened at the same time, but it squeezes up from the bottom and pushes blood out to the lungs or to the body. And then it has to relax to start receiving blood for the next contraction. All right. Okie dokie. So that's just a little bit about how your heart beats. And um, I got a couple of good articles for you a little later uh, about 
heart rhythm facts and things like that. That'll be, I'll put those into the uh, show notes, but I can see our fearless leader is chomping at the bit. So ladies and gentlemen, get your hearts ready for a dose of hope. Our um, fearless leader who H-O-P-E helps other people every day. And we will welcome you to the call. Mr. Hope, are you with us? Yes, Dr. Singletary. So thank you so much uh, for introducing me today here on the Congo Water Health and Information Call. And as well, thank you all worldwide for joining us here on our Congo Water Radio International Program. Um, we are very fortunate, and I will underline that, underscore it, and reiterate it. We are very fortunate to have Dr. Lisa Singletary, MD, here on the call with us. Uh, Dr. Singletary um, is a board certified physician uh, from the United States, uh, residing in the uh, on the East Coast. Um, she lends her time now uh, to nutrition, hydration, and detoxification. She is a board certified physician, um, medical doctor, um, who's now retired. And um, you know, with her time now, she's she's really providing quite a service to all of us all over the world. Um, where would you get this kind of information? We're looking for an understanding of the natural approach to health. Uh, nutrition, something you don't hear about when you go to your physician at the doctor's office. Uh, hydration, um, to some degree you might hear about that, but detoxification, not so much, right? So people don't get to hear this information and understand it. Here we are here on the Kangen Water Health and Information Call. We wanna make sure everyone knows what Kangen Water is, how it works within the body, how to use the machines properly, how to get the best results for your health benefits, the exact thing you're looking for when you wanna purchase one of our machines, yes? So this is a hydration and detoxification ongoing topic that we run here on the Kangen Water Health and Information Call. Dr. Lisa Singletary, being a physician, is lending her time to letting us help to understand the function of the body, the function of the organs, the mechanism of disease. And we're getting quite an education for many of you who have joined us for the first time here today. Uh, we've been here for, I guess, a couple of years, mostly on, on audio only, but in the past year, you know, this I think most of this year, we've been here on the international Zoom call. We have participants from Dubai, from India, from Nigeria, from Uganda, from the United Kingdom, including Scotland, Wales, England, and Northern Ireland, Ireland Prime, United States, Canada, as far as away as Hawaii, and even Vietnam, Asia, and in Europe, France. We're all over the place, and we're happy that all of you are joining us worldwide. And so, Dr. Singletary, I'm very uh, thankful for the presentation that you've given this morning on music and heart health. And just before I go into my PowerPoint presentation, where I'm going to talk more detailed about the Congan water machines, I must say many people may not be aware that I'm also a musician. I'm a singer, I'm a songwriter, I've got music out there and so forth. Look me up, you'll find me, right? So, um, and, and I've been very much aware as well of the effect that the music has on the health of the individual. I, I do recall having an a cappella group, that's where we sing with only voices without the background instruments. And we were uh, tasked to, to go into um, the ICU of hospitals. And we would do that every Thursday, I remember on a schedule. And we would go sing for uh, uh, patients who were uh, incapacitated, who were unconscious, um, ventilators and so forth. And I remember the nursing staff making a note that when we sung certain of our songs, that the vital signs of the patients would all normalize. The heart rates, the heart for the blood pressure, you know, uh, all the, the pulse and so forth, uh, the breathing. Of course, the person's on a respirator and, and all, on all the machines. And so they would observe that all the patients become healthier during that time. So you can see a direct correlation between health, heart health, vital sign, vitality of the body, and music. It's a vibration. It's a frequency. Where our bodies are frequencies. What frequencies vibrate best with us? Yeah. You know, we even tune into music more so, I think, than the spoken word at times. Um, you know, rap music. Uh, love songs, dance songs, they communicate to our bodies and our spirit and our mind in a way that 
uh, can be done even without words, right? And um, add the words and we get a profound, uh, maybe probably in, 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 I don't know, infusion of the entire uh, purpose of the sound of the music. So um, I'm very thankful that Dr. Singletary has given us that expose on the heart and what happens in the presence of music and how the heart is functioning. These are things we wanna know. These are things we need to know. These are things that we have to have an understanding of so we understand what our health is and we can take care of ourselves better, yes? So they, thank you, Dr. Lisa Singletary for your introductions, for your presentation and uh, for all that you do. We love you, yes? So, um, so I'm gonna give <laughs> my presentation now on Congan Water so we can understand what that is. And then we're gonna take live questions from you, the audience worldwide, come aboard, Come in the chat box, put your hand up, let us know that you've got a question. We'll take your question, bring you into the call and you'll ask us your questions. By the way, you may have questions on a subject matter that we haven't covered during our presentations. So we really encourage you all to make a comment or have a question or come with something you because you're all over the world. We enjoy seeing you all. Even on Facebook Live, it's present there and we go back on YouTube. Because um, when you ask us a question, it can stimulate us to help more people with more information they need. So. Come on board, ask a question, give a comment, comment. We'd love to hear from you. So um, we begin here talking about Congan water. Where? That's right. We begin, sorry about that. We begin at the beginning. Yes. So here are my slides. What is in fact Congan water? Yeah. Congan water, by science definition, is what's known as an electrolyzed reduced water electrolyzed reduced water. If you want to understand what Congan water really is, um, you don't want to look up our brand name, Congan water, because that is our brand name. And there's all kind of, you know, opinions about what we do and what we are, right? When you want to look up what us, the science term that we, that we, that reference is what Congan water is. And that is electrolyzed reduced water. So what is electrolyzed reduced water? Electrolyzed reduced water is produced in a process known as electrolysis. And electrolysis is a process where electricity comes in direct contact with water. So in our machines, electricity is hitting the water at the molecular level. And that is producing this process of electrolysis where the production of antioxidant ions and molecules are formed. That name then becomes known as electrolyzed reduced water because the process involves the reduction of or, or loss of, a, of an ion, uh, of an electron, right? Therefore, reduction. So, um, so the outcome is electrolyzed reduced water. And this has health benefits because if we can maximize our detoxification, we eliminate the presence of the substance, toxins that can get in the way of or inhibit our cells function and our organ function and our body's ability to maintain pH balance. So I'm gonna go into more detail about this. This is an, ex this is an example of one of our Congan water machines. This is known as the SD501. Our machines have seven different levels of water that they produce. Three of them for, are for antioxidant purposes. So here you see the Congan water and it's an 8.5, 9.0, or 9.5 level. Those are alkaline pH readings, but keep in mind as we go forward that we are not making your body alkaline, that the Congan water machines are not per se, in the standard sense, an alkaline water system. They are in fact what? Electrolyzed reduced water systems, right? There's a pH of, uh, that's, of settings on our unit because that helps us to understand the antioxidant strength involved with our machines. Not that it has to do with alkalinity. So let's be clear. I'll go into more detail later on as I continue to speak. So the Congan water 8.5, 9.0, 9.5 are the different settings on our Congan water machines. Clean water is a term used for our neutral pH water. It's a neutral pH water when you're not looking to detox, but simply want to have an antioxidant water. Yeah. Acid water, noted in yellow on our machines, is also known famously as our beauty water. 
beauty water is used on our skin and on our hair. Um, it is the pH of our um, surface of our bodies, our skin and hair. And it also will help to kill bacteria under the pores of the skin. And when you can kill the, kill the bacteria under the pores, you can um, allow the skin to clean itself and then the pores to tighten up, right? Um, which would smooth your skin out. And that's why they call it beauty water, right? So, so very nice. Then we have a strong kangen water and a strong acid water. The strong acid water has become famously known uh, throughout the world in our machines because it's, um, as in science terms, known as, known as hypochlorous acid. And that's where salt water mixes with electricity. You get a hypochlorous acid. And the hypochlorous acid can be used to kill bacteria, um, mold, viruses, yeah? So our machines became very popular in the past two years now because people are looking to kill bacteria, viruses, and to sterilize surfaces. So um, that's a strong acid water setting. And there's another setting called strong kangen water. It's an 11.5 pH water produced when electricity and salt water come together as well, simultaneously with the strong acid water. The 11.5 strong water is gonna be used as a substance to soak your fruits, vegetables, chicken, fish, meat, whatever you're going to be using to prepare your meals. And you can actually expose, you can emulsify oil based pesticides and remove the pesticides from your food. So basically you're, doing, you're going to detoxify your food. You can think of it as a hyper way of um, almost what I call that kosher process. So in the Jewish traditions and maybe in the Muslim traditions, um, they'll take salt, sea salt, put it in water and then put their meats and so forth in there to draw out contaminants of the foods before they prepare the meal. In a sense, our strong kangen water is very similar in that it will draw contaminants out of your foods. So you'll have a much purer food at home um, and whatever they've done at the store, uh, wherever they processed it, whatever they did with your food, when you get home before you prepare your meal, you have now control in your hands to make your, fo your foods more pure before you prepare it for your families and your friends, right? So um, those are the settings. Um, this is our Kangen 8 machine, also known as the K8, popularly known around the world as our top of the line unit. It has um, eight plates on the electrical circuit. It has uh, an, an, a universal power supply system. And with that universal power system, you can plug that machine into any electrical socket in any country in the world without a concern of the power system. So you can take it from the United Kingdom to the United States, to Japan, to Dubai, to China, to South Africa, to South Africa, anywhere you want to take it to, plug it into electrical socket and it, it will work. And I have to worry about whether your power converter is functioning properly. Um, so great features in that machine, top of the line unit. If you need those features, you get the Kangen 8 machine. If you feel like you don't need those features and you want to have something just a little simpler, that's fine. Get the SD501, the level up SD501. And it, that machine has seven plates on the electrical circuit. The Kangen 8 has eight plates on the electrical circuit. The more plates you have, the stronger the antioxidant effect. However, there's a one plate difference between these two units. They're very similar in what they do. Either of them will give you the health benefits you're looking for. If you need the special features, the K8, like I said, you get the Kangen 8. If you don't require some of those universal travel systems and so forth, then you get the SD501. It's a price difference of maybe about a thousand pounds in the UK, about a thousand dollars in the US. Um, so your options are there. You can choose what you like. I highly recommend either of them. This machine here is known as the Platinum SD501. The Platinum SD501 has a metallic surface. People will purchase that machine because they like the decorativeness of it. It, it might um, align with maybe you have a stainless steel kitchen or something, or maybe you just like the appearance of the machine. Um, the SD501 that I showed you a moment ago is the same thing in the interior as the Platinum SD501. So there's no difference in workmanship but if you like the decorativeness of it, you get this machine. It costs about 300 US dollars more or 300 pounds more in British pounds. So what is Kangen water? It's an electrolyzed reduced water produced in a process known as electrolysis where electricity and water come in contact with one another. Um, <clears throat> what happens when electricity hits water? 
here's your H2O molecule, and here's your kapow, electricity, right? So when electricity hits a body of water, a lake, a pond, or something like that, you're going to get this electrolysis reaction. <clears throat> water, H2O, when hit by electricity, will break down to its elements. OH and H plus equals H2O. OH negative is called an hydroxide ion. It is an alkaline um, molecule, right? Um, so in the system, water, H2O, is hit by electricity. It's broken down to its, into its elements. And you end up with this OH negative molecule known as an hydroxide ion. It's an alkaline molecule. And we use this as a measuring tool to indicate the overall volume of other antioxidant ions in the water, right? Here's an example here of a diagram showing the restructuring of water with the presence of this hydroxide ion. So you have a number of antioxidant molecules, you have the hydroxide ion, and what we note is that the greater the volume of hydroxide ions within an electrically processed water, differing from minerally processed, which we'll get into later, the more the hydroxide ions in an electrical processed water, the more the antioxidant ions that are present. The, the more the antioxidant ions, the greater the strength of the antioxidant effect. So when we look at our machines and we see an 8.5, 9.0, and 9.5 pH, we're looking at a mild volume of antioxidant ions, a mid-range at 9.0 of antioxidant ions, and a high volume of antioxidant ions at the 9.5 level, yes? So we drink the water at the level that we want to detox with at the time. Electrolysis occurs in the body. There are various articles that go over the antioxidant ions that are in the water. This one you can look up on your own. It comes from a publication known as Science Direct. There was an article in there known as Trends in Food, Science, and Technology, dated in February 12th, 20, February 2012. Go look that up. You find out more about the antioxidant ions within the water and why it's an antioxidant system when you have an electrolyzed reduced water. Um, here it says, as a common mechanism in electrolyzed reduced water, water is reduced, which means we lose an electron by electrical by electrical energy, rock energy, and other energy to produce active hydrogen and mineral nanoparticles. H atoms produce hydrogen molecules, which are weak reductants, but can function as Hydrogen donors, mineral nanoparticles sustain reduction energy because they gradually disassociate to mineral ions, releasing electrons. So this release of electrons can help in our detoxification process. Mineral nanoparticles stimulate hydrogen atoms released from many organic substances, uh, such as antioxidants and methanol, to enhance reductibility. Um, so we're talking about the uh, antioxidant effect of the ions produced in the uh, electrolyzed reduced water, what we call Kangen water. What we're looking for on our meters. So we've got these meters called oxidative reduction potential meters, oxidative reduction potential meters. And it gives us a negative reading or a positive reading when we test a liquid substance. What we're looking for with an antioxidant substance is a high negative number. So here you see this oxidative reduction potential number in the negative, and you see Kangen water at the high negative number, on this case at 400 although Kangen water is known to go up as high as a negative 750 or a negative 800. That means there's a very strong antioxidant effect, yeah? The positive OIP numbers indicate an oxidizing or toxic creation, creating a substance. Here we see things like soda on the high end, on the positive um, end of the spectrum. So, you're looking for something that's antioxidant, look for something at a high negative number on our meters. There you'll find what Congo water is. Some similarities will occur with green tea. Uh, we also see vitamin C on the list. On the other side of the spectrum, we see this um, positive number. We see soda, we see tap water, which we know is replete with a great volume of chemical toxicity. You know, Even though sometimes it'll measure in a neutral pH, the pH is not an indication of the chemical contamination. And that can be balanced off with different chemicals to make it alkaline or neutral in pH. But remember, alkalinity does not 
reference antioxidant effect. You can have an alkaline water that's mineralized, like in America, they've got the Essentia and other alkaline waters. I think in the UK, they might be starting to see some of those pop up as well. But if don't be fooled by alkaline waters in the store. Um, they're not the same as Kangen electrolyzed water. Kangen is produced again in an electrical system. Minerals are placed in an alkaline water in a bottle to make it alkaline, only so it has the same reference as what Kangen is. Kangen has been known as alkaline water for many years now. Um, it's not alkaline water. It's an antioxidant water with an alkaline pH. Confusing, but there's a difference between having electrically processed water and one that is not. Electrically processed water will give you antioxidant water, which is what we need. So your body is mostly water, yes? And the kind of water you have in your body will dictate the function of the cells and organs. Have an antioxidant water, you'll detox at the cellular level throughout the body. Um, have a water that's more oxidizing, you cannot detox as you need to. It's very important. Um, I hope you all can see my slides consistently. So now, um, this is an example of a fish tank or something. Um, and if you have pets, fish for pets, and they've got aquariums, you know you've got to keep that uh, get aquarium filtered. If you don't do that, it becomes a very toxic environment for the fish. In the same way the body can build up a toxicity, it can become a very toxic environment for us. And that can create a situation where the cells and organs become dysfunctional. Don't want that. You want to detox, use Congo water. Watch out for junk foods out there. There's all kinds of processed foods that we're not even sure may even really be food, really, you go to these McDonald's or fast food shops, maybe in the 1960s and 70s, maybe it was real meat then, but mm, not sure these days. So um, French fries that can last for a millennia, you know, drop those anywhere and find them a year later, they've never decomposed. So was it really potato to begin with? And what was it you were putting in your body? These kind of junk foods can become toxic within the system. And that can create toxicity that causes pH imbalance. I'll go over more of that in a moment. A lot of junk foods so that Americans like to eat donuts and candies and screwing all these different things, not good for them. Um, you know, soda, very highly toxic substance, even though they tell you it's just good for you, but it's not. It causes a pH imbalance in your stomach, which causes a dysfunction throughout the body. It causes your body to have to leach off cal calcium and minerals from your bones to rebalance the um, pH of your body's organs. Mm -hmm. You can, that can lead to demineralization of the bones. That can lead to problems, right? Arthritis, osteoporosis, things like that. Not a good look, as I say, not a good thing. So watch out for soda. Many people drink it, not healthy for you. Here's a depiction of the body. Inside the body, we've got different organs. So you've heard the rhetoric that your body was alkaline, drink alkaline water, drink alkaline substances, eat alkaline foods and you'll be healthy. It's very well-meaning by very well-meaning people, but they were given the, mm, the inaccurate information, yeah? Your body is not alkaline. Alkaline foods don't make your body alkaline. Acidic foods don't make your, don't make your, body, don't make your body acidic. You can eat apples, they're alkaline, spinach, green leafy vegetables. Doesn't mean you, when you eat it, you become alkaline. It doesn't work like that. That's not how any of this works. You can eat oranges, grapefruits, pineapples, right? Doesn't mean when you eat them that your body becomes acidic. Your body can take in organic substances of any kind of food, yeah? And take the energy to convert that to, well, take the food to take convert that to energy. And then use the energy, of course, to run its functions. The body is self-healing, look at this and self-functioning. Look at the, the um, examples that Dr. Singletary gave you a moment ago about the, look at the examples of the diagrams that Dr. Singletary showed you about the heart. Notice that um, all those mechanisms are going on. It's self-regulating, the body's self-functioning. Once you've, you know, breath has been breathed into your body, um, your body functions on its own without your conscious effort. The brain has functions uh, that are involuntary to your consciousness that take care of all the body functions, yeah? So the pH of the organs is maintained automatically by the body without your help. Just eat the right foods, you know, which is healthy, nutrient, uh, organic foods and avoid 
junk foods and drink water and your body will take care of itself. So watch this. So the stomach is acidic. Here it says gastric secretion is a pH of 1.0 to 3.5. Anything below a seven on the pH scale is considered to be acidic. Anything above a seven on that scale is considered to be alkaline, right? So the stomach is acidic. The small intestines are acidic. The large intestines are as well acidic. Look over here at the bloodstream. It shows to be more of an alkaline pH, uh, 7.45 to 7.4, um, 7.35 to 7.4, 7.0 to 7.4 for the heart. So uh, different organs in the body have different pH levels. Look at the urine. The acidic level 4.5 to the alkaline level like 8.0. It all depends on the level of digestion and detoxification that's going on at the time, you know. Your body is not alkaline. You don't even really want to test your urine for alkalinity or or whatever, because it doesn't say, listen, the body is self-regulating in all the organs. The healthy organs that are acidic have to stay acidic. The healthy organs that are alkaline have to stay alkaline. Yeah. And um, that's how you stay healthy. If this does not occur, the body can become dysfunctional. The cells can't, and organs can't function properly. In an, in, an, in, an, in an environment where the pH is offline, your body cannot maintain proper health. Congan water will detox your body to eliminate the uh, obstacle from your body maintaining proper pH balance. Yeah? So um, what does it say here? pH values of the human body. Fluids, it says, in the human body function to provide digestion lubrication, nutrient and oxygen transportation, and protection. To perform these functions, the acid levels must be varied to match the bodily function, which means, of course, the pH level. Overall levels of acidity or alkalinity are measured on a pH scale and must be carefully controlled in each bodily fluid. So the body is not alkaline. The body is both acidic and alkaline, depending on the chamber, depending on the organ. Drink healthy foods, out foods. Your body will stay healthy and stay functional the way it should. So be careful of, like I said before, alkaline waters at the store. They are not the same as electrically processed water. Congan, they are simply alkaline mineral water made to be alkaline to match the name used by alkaline Congan water. Um, it's not the same. It won't detox you. It's not a health benefit. Matter of fact, it could be very dangerous for you because it can cause a buildup of, in some cases, synthetic alkaline minerals that can cause your body to have calcium buildup that can lead to pH imbalance, which can lead to cell dysfunction, which is exactly what we're trying to get away from. Do not drink mineralized alkaline water. It is not healthy for you. Do not do it. Some of the, some of the things they put in there to make it alkaline are not even you know, necessarily organic, which means, you, once like I said, you can end up with lodgings of calcium, potassium, whatever in your cells that are at a very high level um, that you don't need to have in the system. So be careful, yeah? So the body is self-healing from the surface of the skin down to the depths of the bones. If you got a scratch or a cut on your finger, on uh, your skin, put a bandit on it, wait a few days, you know it's gonna heal. Same thing with the body's bones. If there's a fracture or a deeper break to a bone, you know that you put a cast on it just to keep it still. That way, while it heals itself, it heals evenly. Um, that same self-healing ability will continue right down to the cellular level, as long as you're properly nourished, hydrated, and detoxed. I mentioned these animals in the wild because you might note that you don't hear the same diabetes, high blood pressure, kidney failure, dialysis center usage, and you know, whatever with the animals in the wild as you hear about the humans. Why? Because the animals in the wild, for the most part, are getting the, nutri the nutrition they need from the land. Produce, fruits, vegetables, proteins, water, the body stays healthy. Humans need to get back to that, stay, what we stay on what we need to have to stay healthy, and we can do very well and recover our health and maintain our health. Offline, if you're trying to find us with more questions and information, give us a ring at in the, uh, in the United Kingdom, the, throughout the UK, at 0800-086-9793. That's 0800-086-9793. Or if you are throughout Europe and Africa, we encourage you to use that phone number to contact us as well. Dial plus four four, which is the country code eight double zero zero eight six nine seven nine three. That's plus four four eight double zero zero eight six nine seven nine three in the United Kingdom. If you're in the United States, reach us at our U.S. number eight six six five two six four three six eight. That's eight six six five two six four three six eight, also known as eight six six Congan eight. 
like a Kangen 8 machine, 866 Kangen 8. If you're on the country of Dubai, reach us to our Dubai number 0800-08-018-589. That's 0800-018-589. And um, reach us there. But you know, mostly worldwide, try to reach us on the UK number, all right? Um, KanganWaterNation.com is our main website worldwide. KanganWaterLondon.co.uk for the United Kingdom. Kangen Water Dubai for Dubai. And um, you know, we look forward to um, you know, you know, seeing you get your you know, your request for information. Our websites provide ebooks for you, gives you more brochures and allows us to contact you to give you more information. All right. So that's a little expose on Kangen water, what it is, how it works within the body, and um, in some parts how to use it. So um, we thank you all for coming to the call. And I turn the call back over to Dr. Lisa Singletary, MD. Well, thank you, Mr. Hope, for those awesome remarks. And we have a question from the Great Pacific Northwest. Right. And I encourage you all, if you've got questions, come on board. Raise your hand on the board. We'll see your hand is raised. We'll take your question. You can put comments in the chat box. We'll see those and answer them as well. So uh, stay on board. Ask your question. Raise a hand. We'll bring you into call live. Take your question and um, look to answer it. Be thorough. All right, Dr. Singletary. Uh, Ms. Juanita, welcome to the call. Well, good morning, Dr. Lisa, Mr. Hope, afternoon. And let Please me pause, let me, let me pause Juanita here, let me pause Juanita. So for those who are on our international call, uh, this is uh, Juanita, uh, and she is in the Pacific Northwest of the United States above California up there is where that is. And she's uh, one of our newest members of Congan Water Nation worldwide. She's just purchased a platinum SD501 with our team, and we welcome her <laughs> aboard. We look forward to her working with her going forward, and uh, you know, looking forward to seeing people be healthy and do well all throughout the Northwest region. And she will take over the Congan Water Northwest regional work. So, welcome, Juanita. Congratulations wow. on your purchase. We're happy to see you on board with our Congan Water Nation worldwide team. Wow, Mr. Hope. Dr. Lisa, it's been a journey. It's been a beautiful journey. And um, for the, you folks who don't know me, I've been with Enagic for 12 years now. And I've got a beautiful SD501 that I've moved at least 100 times. And it's looking a little tattered. Um, so Mr. Hope, and Dr. Lisa spent many, many, many hours with me these last two days to achieve what we did. We didn't give up. There was a lot of hurdles on my behalf, as some of you know, they've kind of labeled me disabled and there were a few things that I needed to adjust with my credit cards, but we learned so much and I fell deeper in love with Enagic than I mean, I, I can't even, the company them, themselves called me right away after Mr. Hope did help me with the order. And they wanted to make sure that I was um, in the right rank. And lo and behold, I mean, God blessed me beyond through this event of two or three days. And it involved probably all of my roommates, neighbors here. Um, new people that were coming to try the water, they, they got to witness this call and they were bringing me food and they were bringing me, trying to carry on conversations all over the yard and I just had to like walk away. And finally, the two that came to try the water, um, they said, we better get out of here. Like you were overwhelmed, Juanita. We're gonna go get something to eat and come back. And I invited him to the call, but I think um, Cornelius right now said he's got a friend in town. And sure, I said, put sure. him. So what we learned though, Dr. Lisa in the gang, for all of you who may be dormant with Enagic, I'll use that word, which means if we've been inactive for more than two years, which I was two years in two months, <laughs> about a month and a half. And they allowed me to join back with Enagic under, I have the privilege. I mean, when people ask me who's my sponsor, I get to say a doctor. 
I've got a doctor who's my sponsor and she lives back in, in Maryland. And then there's this guy that helped her years back and he told me the story in detail and others. And Mr. Hope spent numerous hours with me and all these people over the last two or three days that now Enagic was so kind to me, I had two choices. One, to resign and to wait six months to get back on board. Well, that ain't gonna happen. Two was to fill out a form, F-O, Mr. Hope did it for me. And they allowed me to take everything that I had from all the years past, the 12 years, all those clients, I'll say customers, because only one or two have sold machines. But I get to take all those 15 sales onto Dr. Lisa's group. Now she, Mr. Hope can explain it better, but I think I'm doing pretty good. I only need 85 sales to be a 6A, but only 85 of the sales, Dr. Lisa, will be credited to you. The other 15 that I brought prior, they gave back to me. I could not believe it. So instead of coming in as a 1A, I am a 3A, which blows my mind. Congratulations. Thank you. And like I said, the love that I've grown for Enagic, right? I'm, I'm in this home right here and I'm walking around. You guys have seen it. But now I'm getting it ready to invite people over. And Lucina, my caregiver, came this morning at 6 a.m. And we put, here's all our oils, our supplements. We've got... Um, the so, you're getting, you're, so you're getting ready to set your home up as um, a nice health station where people can come and try water and hear about all things health, yes? Yes. So we're and very just, glad, yeah, that, that you're doing that. And we're very glad to have you on board and very glad to see the, the, the caring and sharing you're doing with others uh, that they can get to understand the Congan water machines, get the health benefits of that and, and go forward to, um, you know, be healthier as we look to help the world and those, of course, in the Northwest. Now, we need a, I want to make sure we're getting some more people online here as well as we get to wind out the calls. I know, but I'm very happy to have you on board. Happy to have your Congan Water Northwest location installed and happy to have you as part of Congan Water Nation here under Dr. Lisa Singletary, MD. All right. Okay. I did have a couple of questions for Dr. Lisa. All right. At the beginning, we were talking about music and you mm. mentioned thing called a metronome or dome what is that metronome it's a, it's a keeper of time e uh m-e-t-r-o-n-o-m-e -E -E, metronome metronome okay All right it's a way that we keep time particularly for music metronome lessons. yeah and so you know tick 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 so you can keep your time when you're playing your music gets young students accustomed to keeping rhythm sometimes older 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 musicians sometimes too but yeah that's what that is mm -hmm. and then my other question dr lisa i've lost considerable weight since i've moved and gone through these last six months let's say so i want to gain 15 pounds and i want it to be in muscle so i went and bought this it's called a yoga wheel or something to that effect and i could put it on my back to help the vertebrae or I've got to go to YouTube. And then I bought some um, bands. So what would be a good way to gain 15 pounds in muscle? My can, legs. Can, can I give a suggestion real quick, Dr. Singletary? So you know what, when you've got proper hydration and you've got proper nutrition, and here's a key for gaining weight, and you do like you're doing, exercises, you're going to allow the muscles to grow, yeah? And that muscle growth will allow you to tone up, strengthen up, straighten up, and also put on the muscle strength you need. And your muscle weight will be what you want as far as that additional weight you'll put on. Um, a long time ago, I was, I was in college and I couldn't gain any weight. And some kid gave me some advice. Oh, what you need to do is eat a lot of fat. That's why you put on a lot of weight. Yeah, that didn't help. Made my stomach big, you know? And I was already pretty chiseled and it made no sense. But physical workout to build muscle 
is how you build your muscle up, you know, and to gain the weight you're looking for. You're not looking for fat weight, you're looking for muscle toning. So that little device you have there, the bands, maybe, you know, doing some little, you know, minor calisthenics that, that, that's helpful for your, for your body type, um, you know, will get that muscle growing there and get you what you need, all right? Okay. And then, Mr. Hope, when you were showing the graph of our bodies and the pH, yes. on the left-hand side of the screen was a, something called bile. What, where is that and what do we use it? need it for oh okay so um so what you're looking at on the chart i was showing uh it said bile so in the liver you got the production of bile it's part of the um detoxification system and um I believe that could occurs in the liver dr singletary can kind of you know you back me up on that make comment absolutely on that. the liver is uh producing uh bile constantly but you don't need bile all the time you need bile it's like your body's natural soap to emulsify uh fats so you need bile to help break down your fat so your body can absorb it and your liver like i said is constantly producing it but what happens in the gallbladder is bile is collected and concentrated so that it's ready for your body to use it when you do eat some meal that's like I had soft scrambled eggs uh, scrambled in butter this morning. So that butter triggered my gallbladder to release some bile to help break down those butter, the butter fat. How come I don't see a gallbladder on this picture or do I? Well, you Actually, know, it's, it's yeah. this green, like you see the liver, I, you can't see my Thing, but yeah, the liver is the brown, large organ. The liver is the largest solid organ in the body. And that green little strip wow, wow. is really a little teeny bag. And that's your gallbladder. And that's where the bile is stored and concentrated. Um, and that's where gallstones happen if you are not properly hydrated and detoxified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And here in this diagram, we're, we're really just showing an overview of the different organs and the pH and the idea so people get understanding the body's not alkaline per se, but it also has acidic chambers and we get to show you the variation of the pH in different organs. So if it doesn't depict spe every specific organ along the way, the idea is just an overview and some so certain organs are not listed here, you know, but that's just to give an overall idea. Yes? Yes. 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 Okay. Just an observation too, like when I've gone to the clinic or the hospital, I'll say, which they've got these vending machines in there. And I had a picture, it still might be on the phone, but it's supposed to be healthy. And you've got all these waters that Mr. Hope was talking about. And it brought enlightenment to me that the tap water was way up there with the tote soda. That's how bad it could be depending on the part of the country. But at that clinic, it, there was all these nutritional, so what like junk food and all these nasty waters in the bottle, bottom row. And I thought, how could they have the right to sell that in a place that says that they're promoting health? Well, you have to understand when it comes to the, um, the medical industry throughout the United States and around the world, um, we're not talking about uh, uh, a medical institution <laughs> that is properly versed in nutrition and proper hydration. So, you know, the same researcher who may be a master uh, understanding the heart function uh, might come out of his presentation, uh, walk into the lunchroom and get a salad and put God knows what dressing on it with God knows what's in it and have, mm -hmm. and, 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 and rinse that down with a Diet Coke. You know, does he know the molecular structure of the heart and the, and the organs? Yes. Does he truly understand what's best for his health? No. And that's why Dr. Joel Wallach, I think he, he, he wrote a book that talked about how um, doctors um, don't tend to have the healthiest body functions. Um, uh, and matter of fact, don't have a very high um, lifespan. Lifespan, yeah. So, um, you know, so we have to understand the sources and um, I guess be conscious of the limitation 
that the medical industry actually has based on their limitation in their education, which was truncated by the uh, Flexner report in the early 1900s, which took their understanding of um, nutrition and detoxification and even herbal approaches out of the medical curriculum. So they do not know in the modern age what they do not know because it was never introduced to them in the medical school programming. So, so that's that. That's all that you know. Um, I do want to make sure I get some other people on if they have any questions because we're about to close out. We've been here for a while, but Dr. Uh, Dr. Singletary. Well, Juanita, thank you for all your comments and questions. Some of those things about the water were good because you know we look at different waters. Once upon a time, I thought all water was the same, but different waters have different pHs. Different waters go, go through different processes, and just because it's transparent doesn't mean it's the same. So, uh, Congan water is an antioxidant water. Most other things like tap water you mentioned, Juanita, are extremely more toxic. And even though they might read at a neutral pH, they're putting other chemicals in there to balance the pH, which hides the fact that there's a problem with the, uh, with the pH of the actual water. There's no way in the world most tap waters are gonna be neutral in pH with all the chlorine that's in there. It's impossible. So what is it? So, you know, so a lot of chemical manipulation and we wanna to try to give clarity. So people drink the water that's best for them, understand what they need to get have a Congo water machine because it re eliminates the toxin, toxic loads and this is the best water for you. All right, Juanita? All right, and just the last thing I want to say. Uh, did you see that? Is, I'm trying to get to other people. Go ahead, the last one, go ahead. Said, music, music affects us more than words. Ah. Now, think about that for five minutes. You take some good notes. So music can affect us more than words. You know, you hear a sound. And the sound can affect your physiology. A sound can make you happy. A sound can make you sad. A sound can make you want to get up and dance. A sound can make you want to sleep. So there's a, there's a, that's a good question, Wendy. So there's a vibration that occurs in uh, the resonation of a matter about us and it affects us. We are one with the planet, we want the earth, uh, we're one with our universe. And so everything affects everything else. Um, you know, my sherry amor, lovely as a summer's day. Stevie Wonder makes you feel a certain way when he does that. Yes. Yeah. Eminem uh, or, uh, or uh, Tribe Called Quest or um, what's my favorite rapper? Eminem. These guys will, do, will make a beat that make you feel a, di a different way. They'll make you jump and dance or whatever. Yeah. So each thing affects you in different ways, and certainly it's going to affect your physiology in the process, as Dr. Singletary was highlighting regarding the, um, the heart and so forth. Yes? If you remember how to get to the uh, audio calls, call number 180 <clears throat> was a call I did on music and the brain. And the very next call was on entrainment, but um, that was... Like I said, one of my favorite calls we ever did on the show, on the program, um, because we delved into those, to this topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Juanita? Thank you. Love <laughs> Thank you guys. You. Love you too. I look forward to building a huge Northwest Congan water world up here that everyone- Oh yes, and we will. We'll help, we'll help millions and thank God. You know, yeah. take care, Juanita. So once again, as we close out, if anyone else has questions. This is a great place to ask questions to me. I'm one of the international experts on the common water machines or to ask a question to um, Dr. Singletary, Dr. Lisa Singletary, uh, who is a board certified physician. We can really get some questions here. So throughout the UK, I see some people out there. I see Africa. I see Nigeria. I see um, uh, throughout the US. Um, any question you have, great time to ask as we prepare to close out the call. All right, so uh, raise your hand in the chat box or something. How does that work? Um, and uh, how do they raise a hand, Dr. Singleton? How do they do that? Do you know? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. If you go to uh, participants, uh, mm -hmm. I believe uh, there's a um, button. A button, yeah. Where? Oh, Juanita just did it again. All right. So. Uh, she might have another place, but either participants or the chat, but there is definitely a, um, a 
label that says raise hand. Okay. Okay. I guess I guess they see that, and I don't see it because I'm the I'm the co-host. And if I was the uh, participant, I would see it too. So if you see that little icon on your pages, people, you know, touch that. We know, lets us know you want to ask us a question. Yeah. We'll unmute you. You'll find it, I think, under reactions. If you can see reactions. Oh, <laughs> looky, looky! Now I see it. Yeah, raise hand. There we are. My hand is raised, and I see Aida has raised her hand. It's from somewhere in the U.S. Yes, Aida. Let's bring you into the call with your question. I kind of give everyone a chance to ask a question and be thorough. Go okay. ahead, my well, dear. Uh, good afternoon. As I heard you again playing with the, uh, with the raised hands. So this is, so I, I raised my hands uh, inadvertently. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I always find um, this Kangen Water Radio sore. Uh, uh, meaningful and, and very enlightening. And I see that my friend, she has been attending a couple of, uh, for some weeks, she's not here today. But uh, I guess, I, I don't know, she has been um, uh, joining you, but I'm not sure if she gets the invitation directly from you because I usually Send send her and remind her. Mm. Uh, do you want her name? Sure. You can send it to us in the chat, and um, and uh, we can, uh, do we can... I have to do that? Because I have I have been texting to her uh, the announcement from you, what you post. So I don't know. Yeah. What's her name? Uh, Danielle v Villafania Villaf. Uh, can you send me her email address, Aida? Uh, yes, I will get, yes. Uh, send me her email address and I can put her on our list. Yes. And I'm glad you brought that up because that, that um, applies to anyone who wants to get the email notification. I'll be very happy to um, send it to, you know, add you to the list and the emails will go out with the, uh, call reminder as well as the link to the call afterwards. Great. So how do I email you, doctor? Um, Res just reply to the email you get from me. Ah, okay. Got right. it. Or you can send me oh, an great, email as well great. at hope at congenwaternation.com. Hope at congenwaternation.com and I'll send it over to Dr. Singletary to add it to a list as well. Okay. Um, yeah. Hope yes, at yes. congenwaternation.com. Okay, let me com. But she just got an email from me. Today. Oh, good. Oh, okay. So. Uh, All right. I have, okay. I will do that right now, doctor. I, I, I might text you her info on the uh, announcement that you sent me today. I will do that. That's easier. Right. <laughs> yeah, just reply. With yes, I, I will do that right Perfect. now. Okay, so she is. Thank you, Aida. Sure. Well, I'm glad I made, uh, I made, I got on, even I, if I didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, know, so, and so I, I encourage everyone. So it those of you up. in the UK, because we have many people, participants from the UK, we got many participants from yes. Dubai, yes. you know. So come on board, ask a little question, give a little comment. It's good for all the community to get to mix, you know, because we're all over the world, we're international. And it's really fun just to, you know, join together that way. And ask a little question, give a little comment. It edifies the call. It provides more information to other people. You know, if we, if we don't cover a topic and you ask us a question on it, it allows us to ask right. that question and everyone gets more information. That's what I mean by defining the call. So, you know, so, you know, and you all have questions out there. I know I can, I can feel, all, what's that term? Something at the bit, Dr. Singletary? Um, chomping at, chomping the bit. at the bit. So, you know, you're holding back, you know, so we'll provide some contact information for after the call as well, but this is a good forum to, you know, talk together. Maybe some of you are shy. Hope at congenwaternation.com is one of our emails. Hope at congenwaternation.com. And we're going to go over some more contact information as we close out the call without the same time. Yeah. Now, Juanita's hand was up again. Did you want to? Uh, I think she was just showing us how to how to hit the chat, you know. Uh... Okie okay, dokie. Okay. 
So, um, and your hand was up too, Mr. Hope. Well, your you know. hand is up too. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us today. I got your text, Aida, just now. Um, thank you for joining us. I'm just checking the last messages from around the globe for Congan Water uh, Radio. And we are so happy um, that we're here every Wednesday and Saturday. I still, I still have the, the instinct to say Friday, but it's Saturday. <laughs> and I'm so glad it's Wednesday and Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time USA, 6 p.m. UK, 9 p.m. Dubai, 10.30 p.m. India, 6 p.m. Nigeria, 5 p.m. South Africa. The list goes on and on and on. Pacific time, 10 a.m. Uh, on, on the California West Coast, you know, Northwest, um, and something like 7 a.m. in the morning in Hawaii. So my distributors out there, they have to get up early, but you know, it's what happens. Live in the other but side absolutely, of the world. send your, if you're not getting an email from me, please send us your email address so we can get you on that list. We got lists all over the place, but. Um, oh, oh, if I can just share one other thing, just as we close out, and I've got Cynthia, you've got a little slide as well, just so people can see once again, try to, if you need to contact us, us offline, which I can, I know you're chomping at the bit out there, I can feel it. So in the UK, 0800-0869793, 0800-0869793. In the United States, 866-CONGAN-8 is actually the acronym for that phone number, like the Congan Water Machine, Congan 8, 866-526-4368. That's 866-526-4368. And once again, in Dubai, 0800-018-589 in Dubai. And anywhere you are throughout Africa, Nigeria, South, uh, South Africa, um, Uganda, most of Europe, try to use our UK line, plus uh, plus four four eight double O O eight six nine seven nine three. That's plus four four as a country code, eight double O O eight six nine seven nine three. That's where we take our international calls. All right. Whew. We'll see you Wednesday, same Kangen time, same Kangen channel, and look for the replays on YouTube at Kangen Water Radio. Please subscribe, love us, thumbs up, all the good things. And we love you all. We love you all. Mwah. Cheers. <laughs>